Even devotees, we were kept away from Prabhupada. Mm. See, don't bother Prabhupada, don't go and disturb Prabhupada. There used to be always people there guarding Prabhupada's room so that people couldn't go there and disturb them. Anyway, somehow these two men, they were in the train and they got through the devotees and they came to Prabhupada and they asked him for blessings. So Prabhupada asked them, what kind of blessing you want? So then the one man said, well, I have a problem for my back, pain in the back, yeah. So, but wasn't very impressed. He wasn't thinking, oh, I should help you to cure your back. Prabhupada wasn't much worried about helping the man. Another man said, oh, I have a problem at home. To get the children settled. No problem, but said, no, no, it's a, I will give you another blessing. 
said, I will bless you that you can be like this devotee. Mm, you can have a nice saffron dress. And shave your head. <laughs> but the man said, Oh, Swamiji, please, no, and they ran away. <laughs> so they didn't want that kind of blessing. Anyway, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, we see it's described how Lord Chaitanya would bless people. Lord Chaitanya would bless them. May your mind always be on Krishna. So, uh, that is the best blessing for a devotee. That we want to always remember Krishna. In China, they give a blessing. The, the blessing, they would tell blessed people. You know, have a common saying, maybe you have gong si pa tai. You heard that? Yeah. It means, when the money comes. Um, China, or the one day, our last one day, so, especially, you know, Hong Kong people, they, they like to think about money and to make money. So, very common in Chinese New Year, they will speak about, they will give that blessing, don't keep up. But they have another blessing also. They have another blessing. May you live as long uh, the, the, the South Mountain. May you live as long as the South Mountain. South Mountain? Yeah, the South, the mountain in the South. So it means you live a long time. Yeah. But you want that kind of blessing? You want to live a long time? So there was a great sage, Markin de Rishi. So he got a blessing from Lord Shiva that he could live through the night of Brahma. Right? One day of Brahma is described in the Bhagavad Gita. Sahasra Yuga Pariyantam Ahariyat Brahma One thousand ages is one day of Brahma. Right, one day of Brahma, one Sahasra Yuga. Sahasra, one Sahasra means one thousand. So one thousand ages of means the four yugas, one thousand times. Is one day of Brahma. And the Kali Yuga is 432,000 years. Right, we've already passed 5,000 years of Kali Yuga. So before the Kali Yuga was the Dwapara Yuga. Dwapara Yuga was twice the Kali Yuga. And the Treta Yuga was three times. And the 
நீண்ட கணக்குல ஒரு காலம் வரைக்கும் So, 4,320,000 times 1,000 is one day of Brahma. And one night of Brahma is the same. And one night of Brahma is the same. So Mark and Dea Rishi got the Bennett, it was a Bennett, a blessing, supposed to be. He would live through the night for Brahma. Could you imagine how long it was? 4,320,000 times 1,000 years. So when the night of Brahma came, there was devastation in the bottom of the universe. There was a great flood. And Mark and Dea Rishi was floating in that ocean. And the Mark and Dea Rishi was floating in that ocean. and they had there was terrible creatures big living entities he'd never seen the like of them before priya priya murugangal priya priya veerangal ellam paakkuri sunnale maligala paathadillada priya priya the shrimad bhagavatam tells of creatures like the timingala fish and the idala timingala meri avaru pirisu pirundadanga solla Now, if you're going fishing, you wouldn't want to catch a timid gala fish. <laughs> the timid gala fish is so big, it can swallow the whale. <laughs> the timid gala fish can swallow the whale. much bigger than the whale this one sense could give me that timangala tamilla avose idu undu vandu avula varumai this is megalodon shark munge nalathi munge kalpa seriya yeah there are so many creatures in the ocean we don't know about we never see them adalla samudrathile evlo virungal namakku theriyadhu but they are described in the vedas and vedathile varnikapadu timingala timingala manasu marking the rishis floating in the ocean and all of these different creatures are there marking the rishi and the samudrathile irukumbodhu pala pala timangalukku la avaru paakkara and he had to they know where where to get food apa enga unavu edukka vendum avarku if you are in the sea where what are you going to eat adala nam enna saapudi there is nothing there was nothing for him adala avan unavu angathile illa he was floating in the ocean the whole night of brahma and the brahma ada pa iru mulu kaalam avaru inda thanniliye nadikittu irundha so he got the benediction he could live for long time but it's not very pleasant avarku varanpettirundha rukaalam vaadradhukku aana adha kaanundhu illa now lord chaitanya he was in this world for how who knows how long was lord chaitanya in this world how many years 
Yes, 48, right, 48 years. 24 years, first of all, with his mother in Mayapur, and then, then he went to Jagannath Puri and went around South India and came back, stayed in Jagannath Puri. 48 years he was in this world. <laughs> And Shankaracharya, how long did Shankaracharya stay in the world? Shankaracharya, how long did Shankaracharya stay in the world? 32. 32, yes. 32 years. But they did great things. Shankaracharya wrote commentaries on Vedanta and Bhagavad Gita. He wrote Jagannath Hastika. He did many wonderful things. Sankaracharya Rumba Kaving Radhana or Vedanta Sutrangal or Kaving Lai Yamata. Jagannath Ashtakam Dela or Vadi. And by his preaching, he drove Buddhism out of India. Or Prachang Mani Bhardamani Radhana and the Uttamati or Nagarcha. And he brought back the Vedic culture. Marbani Medakalacharya is Tavamana. So he was only in the world a short time. But he did it so and similarly, Lord Chaitanya was not very old. But he did so much. Yes, he did many things. So it's not necessary to have a long life. The trees also live a long time. There are trees, there's a, there's a banyan tree in the Calcutta Botanical Gardens. We went to the Botanical Garden yesterday, right? They've got so many old trees, very tall trees. They must have been there a long time. Grown so tall. But what is the good to have a long life like a tree? That is not the goal of life. But what is more important is that we have good consciousness. Better a one moment of full consciousness than a lifetime like a tree. So sometimes people say that, oh, you know, I'm in family life, I cannot, how I can never make spiritual things. Just like there was a one devotee, his name was Satya Raj Khan. In the times of Mahaprabhu, the Muslim people were ruling India, and so many people were given names like that. Just like Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami, they were called Dabir Khas and Sakara Malik. So similarly, this one devotee, his name was, he was given the name Satyara Khan. Khan so. But he was a great devotee. And he went to Mayapur. He went from he went from his home in Navad Navadvip. He went to Jagannath Puri for the Rathyatra. And all the devotees would come from the different villages, the different villages would each bring their Sankirtan party. Just like when we have Rathyatra in Malaysia, you have the Taiping devotees 
and you have the Todu devotees, and the Keau devotees, and the Melaka devotees, you know, each different groups of devotees. So when Ma, when you have Rathiyatra and Puri in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you'd have the devotees, the one group would come from Mayapur and the other group would come from Sri Racha, another group would come from Shantipur. Many different villages, and they would each come with their kirtan parties and go to Radhyatra. And so, this one Satcharaj Khan, before they were leaving, after the Radhyatra, they were going back. He went to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to ask a question. And he asked a question, he said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, you know, I'm, I'm in family life, I'm very fallen. How can I ever make spiritual events? So Lord Chaitanya said to him, you must chant the holy name and serve the Vaishnavas. So he heard Lord Chaitanya say this, he said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, how to recognize a Vaishnava? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, anyone who chants the holy name one time, should be considered Vaishnava. So people think, oh, very good. I just have to chant one time. I don't need to bother 16 rounds. This is better. Just Anyway, Lord Chaitanya said that, he said to the man. So the man thought, oh, very, all right. And he went away, he went home, back to his home in Navadri. Then the next year he came back again. And again he went to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after Rathyatra, he went to see Lord Chaitanya and again he asked him. He asked him, how to recognize the Vaishnava? Because sometimes we think Vaishnava means, oh, nice neck beach or nice tilak, or... How are you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some sign, some the dress of the devotee. Yeah. We see sometimes the, the Chinese ladies all have mini skirt or something, or shorts or something, you know. So, quite different from the devotees. Yeah. Well, you can judge people by the dress. What is their behavior? What are their habits? So, Chacha Raj Khan asked Lord Chaitanya again, how to recognize who is the devotee, who is the Vaishnava? 
So the year before, Lord Chaitanya said, anybody who chants one time is the Bhoti. But this time, Lord Chaitanya said, anybody who chants the holy name regularly is a devotee. So Tacharaj Khan thanked Lord Chaitanya and he went home. And again the next year he came again. And again he asked the same question. How to recognize that devotee? And this time Lord Chaitanya said, that person just by seeing him makes other people chant the holy name. He is a devotee. Yeah. Just like sometimes people know you are a Hare Krishna. They will say, oh, Hare Krishna. Just like this boy here, he goes to school. So one boy found out he is a Hare Krishna. So when somebody, when they see him, they say, oh, Hare Krishna. If you go with P like sometimes they will say, you don't know you are Hare Krishna. There was one Buddhist monk, one, one man, actually he was an English man, and he went to Thailand and he became a Buddhist monk. He became the Buddhist monk, he put on the saffron dress, he shaved his head. So he went back to England as a Buddhist monk. And everywhere he went, people would shout, Hey, Hare Krishna! <laughs> Nobody knows Buddhism in England. They only know Hare Krishna. <laughs> so we have to understand there are different levels of devotees. Somebody started to chant, they just chant one time, they're devotee, they just started. Somebody else is chanting regularly. And somebody else is so much in, in Krishna consciousness that he can get other people to chant. Just like in the nectar of instruction, Rupa Deshamrita, Rupa Goswami describes how there are different devotees. So he describes how to relate to different devotees. Since somebody is chanting the holy name, we respect them in our mind. We mentally honor a devotee who is chanting the holy name. Someone else, they're initiating, they've got the diksha, means the mantra initiation, means the Gayatri mantra, they're worshipping the deity. So we offer our obeisances to that person. And somebody else is engaged fully in Krishna consciousness, 
and he never criticizes anybody and he's uh, we should associate with that person and self. So understand there are different kinds of devotees, different levels of devotees. Somebody is a beginner, somebody is the intermediate, and somebody is the more advanced. Just like in the book, Nectar of Devotion. There's a, an important book. It, this book is like the handbook for devotees. So the nectar of devotion is describing three different levels of devotional service. Right? Who knows? What are the three levels? No, no. There are three different levels of bhakti. One is called sadhana bhakti. And then, what's the other two? Above sadhana bhakti, that is Huh? Vaidhi. Vaidhi Vaidhi Bhakti. Well, Vaidhi is part of Sadhana Bhakti. Sadhana Bhakti is in two, there's two, there's Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti. They're both Sadhana. Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti and Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. But above Sadhana Bhakti there is Bhava Bhakti. And above Bhava Bhakti there is Prema Bhakti. Right? So Sadhana Bhakti means devotional service according to the rules and regulations. Sadhana Bhakti Chuna number Rules and regulations. Go to see the deity, offer obeisances, recite prayers. Take the charanamrita. Circumambulate the deities. There are many different activities we, we do. So, Sadhana Bhakti is called Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, is where you follow the rules and regulations. And then, then there's Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti. Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti is spontaneous. Spontaneous. Just like in the beginning to wake up in the morning, we don't like to wake up in the morning, we use an alarm clock again. But after some time, you wake up naturally without the alarm clock. Sometimes people, you know, before they come to Krishna consciousness, they would eat meat. So they, when they eat meat, they use two hands. But after coming to Krishna consciousness, they learn to only use this one hand. So in the beginning, sometimes we have to tell people, just put your left hand under you, you know, sit on your left hand, so you don't use your left hand. Because 
many people coming to Krishna consciousness, if they came, they were not born in a vegetarian family. So they, they, they didn't know, you know, so it's customary for people who are meat eaters, they use two hash. But people who are vegetarian, they will only use one hand. And so we 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 have to train people to just use, you know, just use, just use the one hand. So you can sit on the one hand and do that that way you'll just use one hand. But after some time, you do it without thinking. You're trained in it, you know, you don't even think about using the other hand. So it becomes more spontaneous. So Raga Nuka Bhakti is where people have natural devotion for Krishna. Naturally, they want to wake up and they're chanting the holy name and they're always remembering Krishna. And then there's Baba Bhakti. Baba Bhakti is devotional service in ecstasy. Sometimes you, you feel ecstasy when we have kirtan, we have a nice kirtan, chanting and dancing. You feel so ecstatic. And you feel trembling in the body and the hair stand on end and you just tears are coming from your eyes in ecstasy. Have you felt that ecstasy? Yes. Did you feel the ecstasy? No? You're not here. You're saying yet? Good. Good if you feel ecstasy. Very nice. We should feel ecstasy from chanting. Sometimes how was the program? Oh, it was ecstasy, ecstatic. How was the prasadam? Ecstatic. How was the kirtan? Oh, ecstasy. So that Baba, that Baba, that's a very strong feeling of wanting to do service for Krishna. Sometimes Prabhupada Sometimes Prabhupada would complain that to the devotees that you have no Baba. Because we, you know, we sometimes they get flowers which were not very nice, which were not fresh or something. So Prabhupada said, well, why do you offer the flower and this kind of flower to the deity, you know, for the deity? And Prema, that is the, where Baba becomes fully manifest. Ba Baba is like the 
the seed, the, the, the beginning of love, but prema is where the, that flower blooms and fully opens. So, different levels of devotion. Sadhana Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti, Prema Bhakti. Sadhana Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti, Prema Bhakti, 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 But they're all pure. It's all pure devotion. You can't say, oh, he's not a pure devotee, he's only doing Sadhana Bhakti. Sadhana Bhakti can also be the pure devotee. Sadhana Bhakti can also be the pure devotee. Somebody else may be a Baba Bhakti or Prima Bhakti. They're all pure devotees. So we have to understand devotional service has many different levels. You know, we are down here, but there's many, many levels up there. And we can go on and experience more and more. Krishna reveals everything to the devotee. We have to learn how to take advantage of the association of devotees. So people come and ask us for benedictions, we can give our own self a benediction. We want, we, when people ask us, bless me, we can bless our own self. We can give a blessing to ourselves. We can get blessing. You can. You can give yourself a blessing. How to bless ourselves? By carefully following the principles and chanting the holy name. We should think. Krishna is so kind, He has given me the holy name to chant. I must do it properly. I must chant with full attention. And when we worship the deity, we should think, Krishna is so kind, he is come in the form of the deity. He is come just to give me a chance to do some service. So we have to take advantage of this time. This is the blessing for us. This is the blessing, Krishna's blessing on us. He's come in the holy name. He's come as the deity. He's come in the form of the scriptures. Srimad Bhagavatam. It's the incarnation of Krishna. Krishna is Swadamo Pagate Dharma Gyan Adhiti Saha Kalo Nishtam Krishan Esha Puranato Juno Jutaha. The sages in Naimisharanya ask Sutta Goswami questions. So one of the questions was, 
so long as Krishna was present on the planet, we know that he was the personification of all religious principles. But now that Krishna has gone from the world, where are the religious principles to be found? What's the answer? Yes, the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, Krishna, uh, Sutta Goswami says, this Srimad Bhagavatam is as brilliant as the sun. And it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna for his own abode. Krishna had come here to this planet, but then he gone back to Goloka. So people who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of the age of Kali can get light from the Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is also Krishna's mercy. Srimad Bhagavatam. We have to take advantage to read the book. Are you all reading Bhagavad Gita? Have you read it all? No. Did you take the Gita Gyan course? Yes. How many times? One? Yes. Did you take it? No. Oh. No. No, it's not too late. No, it is. Okay. Still take it. Did you take the course? We get it again. Yes. Yeah. And we have it in Tamil. They do the course in Tamil. All English. All Malayalam. In English. All English. Okay, any questions? Well, if you get to Prima Bhakti, usually one who gets to Prima Bhakti won't fall down. If you're only at Baba Bhakti, then you can fall back. But if you go to Brahma, you don't fall back. Yes, so that's why we can get to Baba Bhakti. Once you get the level of prema, then you get you have to get rid of all the anathas from that. But that Baba Bhakti is there is still some there's still some anathas. The Baba Bhakti is the you know anatta mantra is Yes, 
I mean the real blessing, not of rewards. Blessing with results of devotee said, and we will remember Krishna for always. Is it possible to, to receive such a blessing from devotee? Yes, it's possible. By the mercy of Krishna, it's possible. Krishna can empower the devotee to give that blessing. And devotees are usually, they say also, devotees are more merciful than Krishna. Because Krishna doesn't usually give pure devotion. Because Krishna becomes controlled by the pure devotee. Krishna is controlled by the pure devotee, so uh, Krishna doesn't like to give pure devotion. Just like Krishna had to become chariot driver for Arjuna, because Arjuna is his pure devotee, so Krishna became his chariot driver. And Krishna became the messenger for Maharaj Yudhisthira. Maharaj Yudhisthira, before the battle of Kurukshetra, they sent Krishna with a letter to go to Dhritarashtra and they asked him, let's not fight, let's not have this war. So Krishna took the letter, he was became the, the messenger for Maharaj Yudhisthira. So Krishna doesn't do that for everyone, but he does it for his, his devotion. So Krishna doesn't usually give devotion. But the pure devotees are more merciful than Krishna. And they understand Krishna's purpose. And they will give Krishna, who is always engaged in Krishna's service. And 
who is not thinking about his own sense gratification, who is detached from the material world, detached from sense gratification. Though the pure devotee can exist in any position in society, he may be brahmachari, he may be grihasta, he may be vanaprastha or sadhyas, he can be in any position. But he has to know about the, the teachings of Krishna and he has to practice the teachings. There are many people who know Krishna's teachings, but they don't teach it to others. They know it themselves, but they don't teach it to others. And there are some people who know Krishna's teaching, but they don't behave properly. They, some people behave properly, but don't don't teach. Other people teach but don't behave properly. And so the, the pure devotee has to know, he has to teach Krishna's message and he has to also behave properly. Behave properly. Behave as a devotee. It means he's not, he's not interested in material things. Is absorbed in Krishna, Krishna's sense. He's always thinking how to spread the message of Krishna to others. So that is the pure devotee. Someone who's attached to spreading Krishna consciousness and who behaves properly also. Actually, you don't really know who is the pure devotee until the time of death. You have to see who is going to go back, who is going back to Godhead. Then only you know who is the pure devotee. Why didn't Lord Chaitanya give uh, this, uh, uh, his explanation of these uh, three levels of uh, devotion uh, immediately in one time? Why did he wait for this question the whole year? Why did he what? Why uh, did he uh, wait for this question uh, the whole year? So he uh, told about one level and uh, um, one year later uh, next level like this for, for long time for long time between explanations yeah. for long time between explanations the, the devotee who asked the what? devotee who asked Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu how, how do I uh, oh yes no you were mentioning the story the past time what's the same on time relationship why didn't he yeah. uh, tell uh, why what? didn't he tell immediately at once, about three levels. Oh, no, oh, in relation to the, the yes, Sati Khan, yeah. that he was coming and asking. Well, he went home and he thought about it. He thought about it and then he came back. And Lord Chaitanya wanted them to understand that there are different levels of devotees. If he had just told them right away, it wouldn't have been so, so much, uh, wouldn't have created a very big impression on him. He let him think about it. So he started from the beginning. In the beginning, somebody chants the holy name one time. So that's the beginning. So he thought about it and then we could understand, okay, somebody chanting one time. 
But if you told him everything in the beginning, then he would just think, oh, he should be a great devotee, he should just only make other people chant. But now, uh, because Lord Chaitanya took so much time, he waited till next year and then the next year. And so, such a rich can understand that they're all devotees. If he told it right away, he would have thought, oh, just only the best devotee is the, he's the best. And other people are not very important. But Lord Chaitanya made it clear that the other people are also devotees. They're also important. They're also respected. Because they began to chant the whole name. Are you chanting? taking care of the babies, your mother, very devoted. Very nice. She brought when uh, his mom, the grandmother brought from Kerala. Grandmother brought from Kerala when he came from Kerala to Malaysia. Okay. 